This is a video about Birkin Monastery, about its efficiencies, its energy efficiency, and its ecological dimension. I imagine Sona, the abbot here at Sitavana, our Birkin Monastery. We're in the basement, or the lower walking sala, library, and dining area. The basic dimensions here are 3,200 square feet on this floor, and with a 10-foot ceiling. This um, is, <clears throat> the whole place is heated by biofuels, wood heat, from interior wood stoves. And we will show you how we do it. I'd like you to take a little look around, okay? So we get an idea of the size and dimensions. It's a rectangle, 40 feet by 80 feet. The materials in here are natural. <clears throat> the ceiling is all wood. Uh, this is uh, basically local pine from the um, forest around the center of British Columbia. And underneath the floor here, uh, this is six inches of concrete, and underneath it is two and a half inches of styrofoam, which prevents heat loss through the floor. And it is also has uh, hot water tubes in it. However, we we're not using them. We found them uh, not not to be necessary. And here are some of the reasons. You see that there are large windows in this room. Hundreds and hundreds of square feet, perhaps 350, 400 square feet of windows. And uh, we, they, these windows are argon E, double glaze, which are uh, good quality windows for retention of heat. They have a special inert gas between the two panels, etc. They're about R3.5. However, that's not good enough in our climate. This is a cold climate. We're at over 4,000 feet elevation at 51 degrees north latitude in Canada. And so the heat loss through windows has to be uh, saved. And so we've made these panels. These are all downward hinged panels. And I will demonstrate how easy it is to simply close one. We just drop it like that. Turn this little wood thing and done. These panels are sealed. They have gaskets here, neoprene gaskets, which the wood touches against, and that is critical. In order not to get any moisture back in here up on the window, which will just turn to frost, you need to basically seal have a seal that prevents moisture from going through. That is the secret of insulated panels. These panels are not just wood. They are insulated and you can see the dimension here. Here's the thickness. That thickness is full of rigid uh, polyisocyanurate, which is the highest uh, R value insulation you can get. It also has no off gas. Uh, we researched it quite carefully. The new products are um, basically don't have any side effects and they're easy to work with. They're not that expensive and they're extremely efficient. That panel is just about an R20 panel. So now your, your windows are R, R, R25, perhaps. And the later, these are the first panels we built, and the later panels um, are even higher. They're R25 or even R30 panels. We thought, if you're gonna go to the, to the trouble of making these things, these are all made by the monastics. Uh, they do not require any special carpentry. They're just simple hinge hinges. Uh, they're birch unfinished birch plywood, quarter inch on the top, eighth inch on the bottom, so they were, they're very light. We made them so that uh, an ordinary person could simply open, lift, and click. 
The whole room can be closed at night after the sun goes down, opened in the day, and you can see the beautiful view. And we get solar gain through windows on a, this is a nice sunny day with snow on the ground. And uh, we get a good deal of our total heat just through the glass windows. And of course you don't want to let it go, you want to keep it so that at night it retains that. It's being absorbed into this concrete and into the concrete walls. So the, the room is well insulated, uh, not super insulated, but the primary super insulation is in this use of panels on windows. And windows, uh, you can get super windows at more than $100 a square foot, triple glaze, even quadruple glaze. Uh, you have to import them from Europe, from Germany perhaps. Uh, they would uh, be totally uh, inappropriate in terms of price. So, and in fact, they only have a, about an R value of R15 at most. And so it's impossible economically to do that, but you can make these panels and they're actually much more efficient than the best quality uh, German uh, super windows. And so that's what we did. And these are, you can make them for about less than $10 a square foot. For 10% of the price, you can get better than super windows. So that is the most likely solution for people who are not multimillionaires to make their houses more efficient. The only thing I can have to say though is that these things do have to be open during the day uh, because of direct sunlight behind the glass can crack the inner pane of glass because the difference between the outer and the inner pane is so great that the inner pane can crack unless it's tempered glass. Some of our places have tempered glass and some of them have just the regular devil glaze. So, but it's no problem. You just open them during the day, close them at night. And the critical factor, make sure it's a gasket here to make sure you don't have uh, vapor collecting back there and freezing. And it's, we're just amateurs and we managed to do it. This is their second year with these and they have worked astonishingly well. Um, we have reduced our wood consumption by from 14 cords down to 6 cords, so these things are as if they produce 8 cords of heat. Over here, you'll notice the wood stove. This single wood stove is the heat source for the lower half of this building. This will easily heat. This entire building is over 10,000 square feet. This stove and a smaller one upstairs provides all the heat through the Canadian winter at 4,000 feet elevation. The temperature stays at approximately 20 degrees or 68 to 70 degrees. In fact, right now we're standing six feet from it is probably close to 30 degrees right here. Um, it's a metal stove. You don't need um, uh, the Masonry stoves, the famous Russian or um, Scandinavian stoves, which weigh enormous amounts and cost enormous amounts. A metal stove in a large area, a metal stove is much more efficient. Use the room itself as the heat storage. It, it, uh, we do not run it at night. It's out for eight to ten hours, and there's enough heat retention that the temperatures only drop by a couple of degrees, and that's because of the window protection. So you only have to run it about 12 hours a day in the daylight. Nobody has to get up in the middle of the night and feed the stove. Again, we run a 10,000 square foot building as total volume inside this is 100,000 cubic feet. We run it on, this year it'll be six cords of wood. And uh, that's quite remarkable for a building this size. This is uh, an important part of the monastery. We're still on the, on the lower floor. And this is called the cold room. It's uh, about 250 square feet, 10 foot ceiling. It is below ground. The earth is at least seven feet down into the ground and it retains, the, the whole room stays between five degrees Celsius and 10. 
We can keep it almost at fridge temperature through about five months of the year. In the summer even, it doesn't go above about 12 degrees. And this is where we've chosen to put our refrigerator and freezer and what we call a refrigerator. This fridge has no freezer in it. It's all fridge. It's low energy. It's rated at less than one kilowatt per day. We bought it some years back. They're making high efficiency refrigerators. Your refrigerator takes up a lot of energy. So we, but when we put it in the cold room, it takes less than 400 watts per day. 400 watts is, uh, is just like a hundred watt incandescent left on for four hours. That's how much this refrigerator takes. Less than 40 watts per hour uh, when it's in a it's normal rating, um, probably around uh, 20 watts per hour in the cold room. We have a freezer, a chest freezer, which are ordinary chest freezers are quite efficient already. You can just buy one without worrying too much about energy efficiency. Now here is an old chest freezer we've turned into a fridge and this is a remarkable thing. We simply bought a little gadget, Johnson Controls, we hang a, the probe over the side, set the temperature, and plug the freezer into it. When this hits fridge temperature, 33 degrees, it turns the freezer off and it turns this into a refrigerator which runs on less than 100 watts a day. Less than 100 watts in 24 hours. Our fridge, our freezer, and our other refrigerator the whole grouping uh, runs on about uh, three-quarters of a kilowatt a day, the, all of our storage. And we, we, we can provide food for up to 25 people on a regular basis. This room easily holds that, and we can store free, uh, most of our things in the, in the racks. Things that need special refrigeration can be in the freezer or in the fridge. So this area of the monastery, the storage of food, the refrigerators, is, is taking about three quarters of a kilowatt per day, which is um, just trivial when you divide that by uh, 20 people. Uh, you're talking about um, 35 watts per person per day. So that's uh, if if you if one can find. Uh, below ground and cut the heat source off from the house. Uh, the, the cement floor is uh, uninsulated so the, the earth temperature, which is uh, usually around 45 degrees Fahrenheit or um, 8 degrees Celsius uh, is what moderates this. And so that's our, our storage room which is, is being uh, a great uh, contribution to the ecological and convenience of living off the grid. Now remember that we are not on the grid. We have to produce all our own electricity, all our own energy, all our, our heat source and everything is provided by us. We have no connection to the grid. The grid is a long, long ways away. The kitchen has a huge window, about 50 square feet, and that brings in solar energy in the afternoon. In this case, we have closing panels on the outside, which I hope to get outside and, and just demonstrate. There are very thick R30 panels that close hinge from the side, and when the sun finishes shining through there, we close from the outside. Panels closing from the outside are more efficient than inside. So here you see um, a very, very good system. Uh, because it's at ground level, we've built the panels uh, exterior. And we just have a gate clip, and it swings. These are this is a big window, and each side is five feet. And it has gaskets again. These are door gaskets. Make sure you have a gasket seal. These can be closed any time, day or night. Uh, there's no fear of cracking or humidity or anything. So that's the advantage of exterior closing shutters. Now notice the thickness here. These have poly isocyanurate inside and these are R30 even though it's that thick it's still R30 and um, they have a good seal and so they they keep the 
prevent the emission of uh, 50 square feet of glass going out all night long. And so that's very effective. And you can see that this is the afternoon. We are gaining solar heat in the kitchen here, shining on the walls back in there, sun coming in here. Solar gain in the day. This is southwest, it's facing southwest. Solar gain, especially in the afternoon. And then once it gets to be five, six o'clock, you just close them and keep that in there. That's very, very effective. So the, the kitchen is also, so propane ovens. This one is special for off-grid. It has no uh, glow bar. Although propane stoves are often sold as non-electric, they all have 400 to 500 watt glow bars in them. This means that they're using electricity and it's a little safety feature, however you can get them without it and they're, uh, everybody's safe but they don't use electricity. So um, if, you're gonna, if you want to reduce your electric use and use propane then uh, look into uh, stoves which have no glow bar. The rest you can see that we can provide electricity in the form of microwaves, toasters, um, electric boilers, rice cookers, etc. This is exclusively provided by um, our off-grid uh, electricity source and we will see that as solar panels. We also, all our water comes from a well 300 feet deep and we pump that well up. We have the highest efficiency well pump here Brunfoss, you can see over here, is a beautiful little thing. When the pump comes on, it pumps up um, uh, and it takes only 220 watts to bring up two and a half gallons per minute from 300 feet deep. Now that is one-fifth of what a normal well pump takes. These, uh, these are incredibly well engineered and for off-grid well, for anybody, uh, it reduces your energy demand by by 80%. It takes one-fifth the energy of a standard AC well pump. So if you're making your own uh, energy, that's important. I'd like to say that the entire monastery on average uses 15 kilowatts per day. And we usually have at least 15 people in residence, sometimes 20. That means that we use less than one kilowatt per person per day. That is less than 10% of the average American, the average Canadian. That is less than 20% of the average European. Um, and we uh, don't miss anything. We have lights. Uh, if you can focus on the lights up here, we'll, you'll see. These lights are LED. They're not compact fluorescents. They're light emitting diodes. These are now have reached a stage where they're uh, have, throw a beautiful light and they have a higher efficiency than compact fluorescence and they last for 20 to 25 years, the 25,000 hours and they're, they're a good investment, especially if you're off-grid. They save you an enormous amount of money over time. They pay themselves back quite handsomely. So we use them throughout the monastery. Occasionally we use compact fluorescence um, but uh, LED is the future of things. Here under the dishwashing area we have a full LED light, crisp, beautiful light over the dishwashing area. You can see what you're doing. So here we would, I'd like to show you the, uh, utili the utility room, uh, how, what, how we manage water. This is our, um, this provides our hot water. We set it, it's set at 120 degrees. This is a, an on-demand propane hot water system. It can provide unlimited hot water at about 10 gallons a minute, uh, which is more than mm -hmm. adequate for the, for 20, 25 people. And it is, Efficiency rated is 94% efficient. 
the tanks, water tanks, we used to have water tanks, and they're around, if you're lucky, 60% efficient storage. So we got rid of them and went for the 94%. <clears throat> they can, you can sometimes supplement this with uh, solar panels, etc., but uh, there are there are problems with solar panel, solar hot water panels. Uh, they cost a lot, uh, and they only they do only really work about seven months a year. So uh, this is a still uses fossil fuel, but it uses it uh, to its absolute maximum. Um, here we have water storage. We a thousand gallons. 1,000 British gallons, uh, US 1,200 gallons of water from their well, so we pump it up and then it, it is used for the house and it, it can run, a, run us for quite some time. Here is one, one of our measuring devices over here and maybe we can film this. This is a water, a hot water meter. So we, uh, it's a simple thing, it probably costs $150 and um, a man who was not a plumber installed it. It tells us how many liters of hot water we use per day. Once a month we record that, divide it by the number of days, and divide it by the number of people, and we can have a sense of how much hot water we use. We also know that this is 94% efficient, and we know the price of propane, how much propane it uses. Therefore, we, we have some grasp of how much energy we're using in hot water. Hot water is, for most people, it's 20 to 25% of their total heating and energy bill. And so we um, keep close track on it. It costs us actually about, uh, the latest calculations are about 16 cents a day per person to produce hot water. So that's not uh, too exorbitant. And um, we are using on average about um, 12 gallons per person per day and um, of hot water and uh, that's not that's that's pretty good um, so the average is more like 20 gallons for households and so forth. So, uh, there you hear it you just it just actually clicked on and so it only provides on demand it doesn't have a pilot light or anything no storage, it only heats as necessary. We also have high efficiency German Brennfoss pressure pumps to keep pressure in the in the building and these are also about five times as efficient as normal. These are super efficient uh, faucets. These are have they click three ways, one, two, three. So the top one is one and a half gallons per minute, one gallon a minute, half a gallon a minute. Normally speaking, low flow faucets are considered at one and a half gallons a minute is low flow. This goes down to half a gallon a minute. That's one third of the water. So when you're washing your hands or brushing your teeth, you don't need a gallon and a half a minute. You only need a half a gallon a minute. And this, by the way, uh, good quality commercial places only have a half a gallon a minute. These can be purchased. This from this is from a company called Niagara, and so you can adjust it if you if you need more to fill a container. You can just click it up and down, and that saves an enormous amount of hot water. It's not water in general that we need to save so much, but as hot water is is heavily invested in energy. Again with the the shower head is also a three switch. One is half a gallon, one gallon, and one and a half on the top. So this is the, um, also can be purchased and, and it reduces your shower. Usually people like about a one gallon, at least a one gallon, right in the middle. And it has a little click on it. And that reduces your energy consumption and water consumption. So this is an important part of the whole ecological idea. Here again we have LED light bulb. These are beautiful uh, 
light bulbs. They have radiators on them, heat radiators, and they're 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 not like ordinary light bulbs. You don't if you drop it, it won't break, and it'll last for 25 years. And this is a uh, seven watt. Uh, will give you the equivalent light of about a 45, 50 watt bulb, and is much more durable and has no mercury. As it, compact fluorescents have mercury, this is no mercury, and has a good clear quality of light. So remember, we use one tenth of the energy of the ordinary person. So we have all these lights, and it's just we have put some thought into it. We also, some of the features are that we have inside windows. These are interior windows. These are double pane. We made them ourselves. The, the glass is separated by about three inches. This is for sound control, but you can have light. So this hallway is lit, illuminated, uh, during the day without any electric lights because of interior windows, but it prevents sound from going into the meditation cell on the other side. Another feature here is our lighting system in hallways is battery operated LED. These are rechargeable batteries in here and uh, small LED motion sensors. They, as you approach them, they will turn on and stay on for about 30 seconds and uh, they take, they don't require any electrical wiring, but they have rechargeable batteries because um, <clears throat> batteries in themselves are very wasteful, but the energy draw on this is tiny. We're talking about maybe one watt per day at most. And these will last for year, a century um, if the materials hold up. So we found that electrically, if you leave, hall lights are the most likely to be left on overnight, etc. So if we just eliminate that, and then it it uh, it works. Also, that our floors are black. Now this floor are an inch and a half of concrete, and they, that has mass and heat storage, and they're black, jet black. When when the sun comes in the window, it absorbs. Here we have our entrance, and this is how we manage cold weather. It's a, it's an airlock, so we have there's plenty of light, but the out, out there is not heated, but it's well insulated. So any heat that escapes through here, or when you open the door, you step in and you airlock this. So this is how we ma maximize the minimize the heat loss from people coming in and out. Uh, it also very nice for keeping the boots and everything out there. And I'd like to show you a couple of the bedrooms. Again, double glazed Argon E windows. And these are our th close to R30 panels made with polyisocyanurate <laughs> solid insulation boards. Here, this wall, we have beefed this wall up from a good R20 up to R50 by insulating on the inside. <clears throat> we glued foam to the wall and then we have oak plywood. This wall here is also R50. It's 18 inches thick. The regular 6 inch wall and then we added an exterior wall. This is the north facing wall of the building. Heat in the northern hemisphere, most of your heat is lost through the north wall. If you're going to insulate one wall, do the north wall. Take out the windows of the north wall. You see no windows in here on the north wall. Now, so here is the meditation sala. A gorgeous room with a jet black concrete floor. Here we see also our second wood stove. This heats the entire next two stories, which is more than 6,000 square feet. And it's not a big wood stove, but it's, it's more than adequate because we've super insulated the building. Here is one of our 
uh, pride and joys. This, you see these large windows. On the outside of, of the windows up there are R30 closing panels on the outside, which we leave closed all winter. Here, it, at night, we want to close off these giant windows, so we've made rolling panels, 17 feet tall, 8 feet across, R20, and you'll see the wheels down here. experimented with. Rubber flaps here, you see the rubber flap, and rubber flap, rubber flap up there, etc. And that is what seals it. And uh, maybe we can pan up to the ceiling. The ceiling is uh, cedar, and you can see it's a cathedral ceiling, it's about, oh, 25, 30 feet at least to the peak there, maybe more. And the ceiling of this entire building is super insulated to R80. There is two feet thick insulation. In terms of uh, maximizing the efficiency of a building, the first and easiest place is the ceiling and so you optimize that by going maximum. So that is twice what the code requires or recommends. Most good new houses have R40 in their ceilings. We have R80. Otherwise, you're just heating the great outdoors. We had to deal with some very large windows that were already in place. And what we did was we built R30 panels. These panels are eight feet by eight feet, 64 square feet each. They each one cover a 64 square foot window. And you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven. So you can have, that's the glass that is covered from the exterior. These are exterior panels, R30 with seals. They do not open. Um, we decided against, they, they could potentially open, but we don't usually open them. The remaining glass, each one of those glass squares is 64 square feet times four, so you're into the 250, 260 square feet of glass. And that is what the sliding panels on the interior of the sala slide across. And the, they are um, R20 or R25 uh, panels and they keep the heat in during the night. In the spring and fall, those windows bring in enough solar energy to uh, heat this uh, building. The sun coming up in, uh, in that direction in the morning catches that and after about three or four hours goes away and is just right for solar, passive solar gain. This is an exterior addition to the wall and you can see that the regular wall <coughs> stops at that raw wood and now we've added on another foot of uh, wall which is insulated up to um, R30 so plus R20 is an R50 wall and that's added on externally. This wall is internally added on to and the east facing wall is also and you can see over here the depth of the windows. You can see the thickness of the wall here as you, as you look at those windows. Those windows are uh, at the face of the previous wall so you can see the thickness and that along the bottom it's supported by a beam so we've just added this wall on the outside and that has made a huge difference it's the north facing wall so it brings the wall insulation to R50. So let's go and see our solar panels. 
Okay, this is our solar array. Four sets of panels. They're all they run into the same battery bank. And you can see this panel system is about a three and a half kilowatt. It's not big. However, for instance, today, this is January the 19th, and it's a sunny winter day, and we are running a monastery with 10 to 15 people in residence, and by the end of today, we will have produced just by solar in the middle of winter almost enough electricity to power the entire monastery. So that's how efficient it is. These panels are on uh, posts which can be turned. They, in the summer, we, uh, in the winter we leave them south facing, but the rest of the year we actually turn them manually just by pushing three times a day and that increases their efficiency up to 50%. <clears throat> so in the summer we can get, um, well in the spring, summer, fall we get 100% pretty well of our electricity. In the winter um, we can get about 40%, uh, 50% for the, the two to three months of the dark, darkest months. But on a good sunny day, uh, late January, you can get almost enough to power the monastery. So that's the structure. We'll, we'll take a look in the where it goes. Over here also I would like to show you the um, our outdoor wood boiler. So it is a gasification wood boiler and yet we don't, we're not even using it. <clears throat> Although it's a high efficiency boiler we, we have simply increased our efficiency so much that we do not need to provide heat via the boiler and um, we have reduced our wood demand by eight cords and so we run now exclusively on the interior wood stoves which gives you live crackling fire, requires no electricity, and is highly efficient. This is our wood shed, and this is fir bark. <coughs> if you've just been discarding fir bark, you should not. Bark, or any bark, is actually higher BTU content than the wood. If it's dried properly and used in a nice mixture, you will get enormous fuel value from the bark. Uh, it burns very hot, very fast, and should be burned appropriately mixed with the with the wood it came from and, and so that's our outdoor wood storage beautifully dried protected from the elements but with air coming through again the, the boiler is not in operation because <clears throat> we just don't need it at the time um, we may use it in future however over here if we can see a little mound of snow you, um, in, in under that mound of snow is a uh, 3,000 gallon of water storage tank, highly insulated, insulated to R40. And this boiler heats that water up, 3,000 gallons. It brings it up to 160 degrees or 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it runs underground to the main, both buildings and uh, runs through the LaFleur system. So that's what you call gasification with storage. And that's the only way to go with these wood gasification boilers. They're not efficient if you do not use large-scale storage. If you do, they can hit ranges of 85 to 90 percent efficiency. If you do not, the efficiency falls and that's why we have installed that uh, water storage. However, my general feeling is that it's much better to invest in super insulation and your heat source, the heat providing stuff, starts to become almost irrelevant because it's so small. Um, if you focus on providing heat, you worry about the efficiencies and this and that, but the real places don't squander the heat to begin with build super efficiency into the building even if you have to retrofit it's well worth the investment okay now this is for the sake of those who are off grid or monasteries which have solar panels but are on grid 
you won't be familiar with this aspect. You will be familiar with the inverters, turns DC electricity into AC electricity. And uh, this also uh, converts the, when the generator kicks on, it turns it into DC to feed into the battery bank. There are solar charge controllers, each one on a panel. And this is a very useful device up here called the Pentametric. We're at 91% full today, exclusively by solar, and it's 2.30 in the afternoon. We're at 51.9 volts in the battery bank, and this keeps a record, and I can see it off a computer. I don't have to come out here and monitor all of this stuff. We have it all on computers. In here is the battery bank. You'll see just part of it. There are 32 big, deep cycle batteries in there. Total capacity storage, 75 kilowatt hours. The monastery runs on about 15 kilowatt hours per day. So, and if you discharge it down to about 80%, which you can, this battery bank can hold um, four days worth of power, three and a half, four days worth of power, and supply all the power needs on cloudy days, etc. And so, uh, and this is more than four years old. We're hoping and expecting that we'll last another four years to even longer. Um, the feature of this type of battery bank, it's maintenance free. It doesn't off gas. These are called AGM glass mat sealed lead acid batteries. And uh, that is their primary convenience is that they're simply maintenance free and much safer and yet have the same power they are slightly higher in price than wet lead acid batteries, but having had a battery bank of wet lead acid for eight years, uh, we decided to go on maintenance free. Uh, it's less dangerous, less problematic, and ultimately perhaps will last as long or longer. So that is uh, the energy structure of the system. So after all the energy improvements, <coughs> sophisticated uh, monitoring, there's still one thing left to remember, and that is to turn out the lights.